Greetings, y'all, and I apologize if there is any background noise. My dishwasher is uh, being a little temperamental. But anyhow, welcome to my channel where this is all things cosmetology and hair related. So I was uh, watching some YouTube videos about two years ago or so, and I saw a very nice lady named Vivian Pratt. And her video is right here. Please give her video a like and go subscribe to her because she does amazing videos. So when I saw her journey, it was pretty cool. So she had gotten a perm, right? A lot of people get perms and a lot of people get a perm and it's too curly. What do you do? Uh, sometimes even the professionals mess up. So if I remember correctly, and I have not watched the video in a while, y'all, I believe she went to the salon, she got a perm, and the hairdresser made it a little too tight. That happens, and it was too poofy. So uh, Vivian decided to use a relaxer on the perm. And I know a lot of people were going like, ah, why is she doing that, <laughs> right? But the reality is, this is kind of like that gray area in cosmetology. The rule of thumb is, you cannot, um, what's the word? It only works one way. If you have a thio uh, perm, like a curly perm, not like a thio straightener, but a regular curly perm where 50% of the bonds are broken, makes a curl, you can use a relaxer. Now, the, the big thing is can and should. While you can do something, should you? It's really that gray area. Now, again, disclaimer right here. I am a professional. I am a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology educator. I do not ever recommend putting a relaxer over a perm of any sort, but people do it and it happens. We're gonna find out today what happens when you do that. How do you avoid a fail? So this mannequin, she's got pretty healthy hair. Um, she got a perm, it was too tight. She got a piggyback uh, wave and she has virgin hair. She has no hair color in it whatsoever. So right, that, right off the bat, we know that only one service has been done. We know the hair is in healthy condition and we know we are not dealing with hair color. That makes things a lot easier. If she had any sort of bleach, highlights, or hair color, this would be a big fat N-O exclamation point. No way, Jose, we ain't doing it. So, without further ado, we are going to learn how to relax a curly perm. Let me see if I can just scooch that back a little bit more for y'all. All right, y'all, so the first step in any kind of chemical service is the hair and scalp analysis. With a relaxer, you cannot, under any circumstances, use the product on a scalp that is freshly shampooed or has cuts or abrasions or any of that. The reason why is number one, this chemical product right here, I don't care how good it is, I don't care if it says it's got shea butter, cocoa butter, or honey, uh, ain't nothing is gonna protect you from sodium hydroxide. Lie, the active ingredient. So what you have to do is using a base cream and again, I'm just pulling out um, basic conditioner, Maisani's Rose H2O, and I'm putting it on the scalp. Ideally though, uh, you would have the client about a week before, maybe a little bit longer, shampoo their hair, do a deep treatment, do a get pure treatment, cleanse the hair, get it completely clean of anything. If they have gel, well, all right. <laughs> Again, gel gets in the way of services, but honestly, in a relaxer, I don't even think that the gel would protect the scalp. I think the relaxer would eat right through it. This is a pH of about, it's like a, it's 11.5 to 13, to 14, sorry. 14? Gotta check my pH scale. I'm pretty sure it's 14. But it's a very strong chemical. It is the highest you can get on a pH scale on some brands. It is no joke. It is very alkaline. Acids constrict and melt relaxers expand and explode. So we have got to make sure this scalp where she produces heat, where the hair is uh, less keratinized, is well protected. So I'm gonna start off the application process. And all you do is take your uh, conditioner and start off right on the scalp and just apply the base cream. Really make sure she's based good. 
So I'm gonna go through and make sure she's all based up. I'm gonna do a few pieces for y'all so you can see. Just tap, 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 and spread. You really don't wanna get it on the hair, um, but it really doesn't matter if it's just close to the scalp. This is just gonna give us a little bit of insurance when we're using such a caustic product. And the one thing I will say too with relaxers is if you look at relaxed hair, on the product box, if you're using a store-bought relaxer, they show you a beautiful model. And that's part of the problem. You know, people want what they see. We're not buying the product, we are buying the model. So, especially back here on the scalp area where it's more you know, tender around the crown, we really wanna get through. Um, so just get in there and base that scalp real well. Another problem I'm noticing too is that I've actually seen this happen in some of the uh, Dominican salons um, and it is very illegal, but rather I should even say unethical, but they are professionals that are actually putting relaxers uh, in a conditioner. So people are going in there for a blowout and they're leaving wondering why is my hair, you know, feeling a little bit, you know, awful? Why is it getting straight and limp? And it's because they really were using a relaxer. So that's something to really be mindful of. And if you ever see that or suspect that, uh, as a consumer, call state board. So I'm gonna finish applying the base cream and I'll be back to apply the product. All right, y'all, so she's all based and I have my relaxer here. I'm using the Maizani Butter Blend Relaxer um, for medium to normal hair. Uh, I know some relaxers have different uh, levels, I guess you could say. And the problem with some cosmetology students, some students will think, oh, I just wanna get it over with, I want it quick. Uh, and they'll go and um, get the most strongest relaxer, which uh, is resistant, which I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I have not really met anybody who needed a relaxer that strong. The chemical all does the same thing. The sensitized relaxer, normal, and the extra strength are like driving a car. You're still gonna get to the destination, but when you're driving somewhere, it is better to go somewhere slow and steady than just taking floor in the gas, the trees are going flying, your window's going flying, you're getting a speeding ticket. That's what can happen. So without further ado, I'm gonna open this up and you can see it is nice, creamy. I've had cosmetology students wanna smell, it's a cosmetology thing, they wanna smell everything. And my response is, uh, just from here, like holding it like this, I can smell this. Relaxers don't really have a smell per se but it is still a caustic chemical and it is something that you do not want to be breathing in. So get a really good amount in a bowl um, using a spoon. You do not want to use a, uh, what do you call it, a, a brush or a comb or any of that because what can happen is by doing so you actually run the risk of uh, contaminating the relaxer, making it less effective, because with any chemical, uh, if you have hair in there, it's gonna start dissolving and breaking it down. Because that's really what a relaxer is when it comes to it. Good amount like that. Okay, so I'm starting off, and I'm gonna be very methodical about this. Taking about a quarter to half an inch sections, I try to do a quarter, go in there, get a nice uh, chunk of relaxer on there, and apply it half an inch away from the scalp, all the way to the porous ends. Using your finger to smooth and tilt it in a way where it is far away from the client's face. Quickly to the next section. You do not want to waste time uh, being too slow doing this because with any chemical, you know, you're gonna get, get it over-processed. With this chemical overprocessed is having no hair and having a chemical meltdown. So not a good thing, right? And kind of just scissor it. And if a client should ever complain about burning, 
we're rinsing the whole thing off. But if you look at the client and realize that, oh wait, you know, she's processed in the back, but the front is still, you know, got more time, you could easily do that versus uh, the opposite, in which case you would take everything off. Um, again, it's just one of those things where this chemical is, so many things can go wrong with this, so why risk it? On to the next one. Slow and steady uh, may win the race, but in this case, it can potentially get you a lawsuit as a hairdresser. Um, or going on judge duty, because I've seen that before. And if you watch how my lady does it, it's always funny because the textbook tells us the state board way, but then in real life there's, I call the real world way, where people kind of do um, what they see fit with this product. Saturation is critical. If you take too big of a section, you could potentially risk um, not saturating it enough, and that's another problem. But we're always applying to the mid shaft first. That's kind of like the common theme here with any of the virgin uh, services. Um, you would never just apply this all over and that's the mistake that I see people making on YouTube is they apply the chemical all over and it's just an absolute mess. And you see how the hair is springing like that? That's how we know that the hair is not ready. Take everything that you did and put it down. Go on to the next section quickly. And this mannequin has a lot of hair. Uh, in a human, it is not gonna be nearly as much usually. But it's better to always have one extra bottle of relaxer because if you do not that is going to be a huge problem um you know i've known people who run into color and bleach they try to you know rig it and make it seem like it's okay with this product there is no such thing as doing that Scissor that, work that in there. Down to the porous end. You are never combing this product. Do not do that. That will absolutely wreck the hair. Uh, we use our uh, fingers to just kind of scissor and make it go smooth. Studio Luma has a really good video on this, and now their episodes are free on YouTube. That was probably one of the best things that my lady ever did because it showed you how to work on different clients, different personalities, and all the scenarios to experience in a salon. Another important thing I want to mention as I'm doing this is this is why I see like I'm a I'm a big believer in that you can do certain things at home. You know, you could potentially uh, do your own fringe at home if you're careful. You could style your own hair. You can do your own hair color. Uh, I am not a big fan of doing three things. Bleaching hair, 
using thioperms or doing relaxers at home. Because those chemical services, if done at home by yourself, you could really mess your hair up. Um, The other thing too is that this is a lye-based relaxer. I know that some people are using uh, no lye relaxers because they think that no lye is better or you know more organic or what have you, and those are all absolute myths of hair. Lye is lye. It is still the chemical that the you know people use to dissolve tissue. It is a very very caustic chemical, and there is no safe version out of it. No lie is a lie because if you're not using sugar, you're using sweet and low. You're still using something that gives you the same effect. I need more product, so prime example, right? Um, I think I'm gonna probably use this entire thing. And this is why hairdressers should always tie their hair back when working with chemicals, because if you get any of this on your hair, it will melt it. I had uh, somebody um, that I was going to cause school with at the time had a beard and he got some on his beard and let's just say that he had a little hole uh, in his beard when he left. That was not a good sight. Um, okay. So again, take a section of this. doing a side section and the same principles apply we're keeping the hair away from the face as we're doing this and we work that into the hair And even while using base cream, your client could still feel that the product is uncomfortable and that's because of the very high pH of this product. Another thing too is that we are never ever going to relax the hair 100% straight. To do so would mean uh, that you are going to be facing a lawsuit because 100% straight, the hair cannot handle its own weight and it caves in on itself and just snaps off. It turns into mush and we do not want that for the client ever. Okay, smoothing each section down and again away from the face. And we are on to our last section.
And again, because it's a mannequin. All right, y'all, I apologize it cut out. I quickly finished the other quadrant and I got another memory card. That was all on me, so I do apologize. Uh, now what we're gonna do is again, we are gonna be very fast. We're going right to the back of the head where we started applying and we're gonna finish applying the relaxer to the regrowth. And then we are going to um, finish the processing time. I have the timer set for the max amount of time as I'm doing this because again, with relaxers, you have got to be fast. Fast and efficient. If you just process right after you finish the, the ends, you are absolutely going to mess up the person's hair. So again, I'm gonna keep going. So I keep on keeping on. <laughs> Get as much possible, as much possible product on there. Really saturate the hair and get it smooth to the porous ends. You don't want to irritate the scalp too much, but just be quick and efficient to get it on there um, because timing is of the essence with this. I don't think I could stress that enough. I had a class that I was teaching and they all were uh, messing around and it took them about an hour, probably a little bit longer, to apply a relaxer that was a no lie relaxer and it was marketed as damage free and you know, nourishing and all these other foo-foo dust and lies. It's still a chemical. And needless to say, the mannequin's hair was just shedding and shedding and shedding and falling out. And it was not a good thing. Um, even with the best care, there was nothing that we could do at that point except for the big chop. And, you know, if that was a real client, you would just pray to the all high heavens that they would not sue you. Because <laughs> um, that's pretty bad. And the reason why that we don't ever use a comb is number one, it's just really bad to put that much tension, but also because this chemical just does its job on its own. It does not need the added force uh, from a comb or anything like that. It does its job, it's already thick and it will kind of pull the hair down in place more or less. So it is a very strong chemical. And I'm gonna probably cover this in the theory, but again, the reason why this might work, uh, whereas you cannot um, use a relaxer over, or sorry, you can't use a thio over a relaxer, is that relaxers cause a special chemical change in the hair called lanthionization. So lanthionine, think about in terms of chemistry, right? Thio includes sulfur. In lanthionization, your hair is hit with an assault so bad that it loses a sulfur atom. Your hair is forever changed. There is no going back whatsoever. So uh, that's what happens, um, you know, chemically speaking. I'm probably going a little too slow to be honest, <laughs> but work it in there, down to the porous ends.
And this is why having an assistant comes in handy because if you need any more of product, they can assist you with that. Okay. Kind of pull everything back gently. And when it comes to the hairline, careful to avoid hitting the skin. Um, I put a lot of barrier cream on that and that's why we do that is to really just add that extra layer of protection because of the chemical assault that's gonna happen from the relaxer. Okay, and on to the last quadrant. My last two sections. All 
All right, and what I'm gonna do is check, uh, and what it looks like is that the hair will remain straight, not have that wave anymore. When the hair is like that, it's time to rinse. And you're gonna rinse for a total of, uh, I will, number one, rinse all the product out is the biggest thing. Um, and then what I do is I use the neutralizing shampoo. You're always supposed to do that because it gets the hair uh, to remain, um, you know, n n normalized, I should say. We do not ever use a sodium hydroxide, or sorry, uh, hydrogen peroxide, I should say. Um, we don't ever use a hydrogen peroxide based neutralizer because that will absolutely dry the hair out and break it. Remember in lanth ionization, it's the restoration of the pH that fixes the hair into place. It is not, um, you know, like a perm. So again, just, you know, smooth the hair out like so. And once you start to see it remain straight, it's time to rinse. So I'm gonna finish processing and then we're gonna come back and check. All right, so the mannequin is now uh, normalizing. I tend not to say neutralizing. We used uh, an acidic shampoo, Perfect Sense. It's a shampoo that you put it on and it gives off a very disagreeable odor, like rotten eggs, uh, when there are traces of the relaxer still in the hair, so you keep shampooing. Uh, this is the third shampoo and the final one. I'm gonna go condition the hair and then after I'm gonna wet style it. All right, y'all, so this is what the hair looks like after uh, relaxing. And now it really becomes a matter of just maintaining the integrity of the hair. That's why all the products I use have the pH on the bottle and they're acidic in pH. After a relaxer, you wanna be super gentle, use a wide tooth comb or a wet brush very carefully, smooth the hair, put a lot of leave-in conditioner and uh, serum or silicone. The goal is to really just maintain that integrity of the hair and just maintain um, the strength of it. I do not recommend using a hot blow dryer with a brush and uh, flat ironing. Um, I know some stylists do that, but my personal ethical code is just really focus on smoothing the hair. Uh, you can put her under a nice warm dryer, not hot, uh, warm and then do a cool finish set the hair in rollers, do all products for smoothing um, that are acidic in pH, again, to restore the cuticle. So I will come back when she is all styled and dry. All right, y'all, so my um, model, <laughs> I think it's Diane, oh, Penelope. So Miss Penelope had finished processing under a warm dryer. Again, the dryer was warm, it was not hot, and I did a cool finish on it. And what I'm gonna do is take out these rollers and we're gonna comb her out. So as I'm doing this, I figured I'd mention that with a relaxer, you know, there's many different ways to style the hair after. Remember that you just put a client's hair through the ringer and back, no pun intended, because of just the high pH. Relaxers being so high in pH are gonna shift the hair away from its normal pH range. And remember that it's logarithmic. What that means is that simply just going up uh, in pH is not going to be um, you know, like a one point increase. It is going to be times 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is, you know, I'm not good at math, but it is <laughs> quite well over a thousand times stronger than what the hair is used to. So you can only just imagine what it is doing to the inside of the hair and then you're trying to normalize the hair's pH with shampoo, uh, but even then it still is a chemical service. So why be any rougher than we have to? You could do a deep conditioner, you can uh, put a lot of conditioning products on the hair, but I would not recommend ever using a flat iron on relaxed hair. I know people do it anyway, or a pressing comb, or curling iron, or Marcel iron, or anything else for that matter, because of just how um, compromised the hair can be. So also know that with a relaxer, you're not gonna get 100% straight. I always say it's better to have a little bit of wave because that means you have more wiggle room should you decide to color or bleach your hair after a relaxer. I do not recommend doing that with hydroxide relaxers because they really are not that compatible. You can use a semi-permanent hair color that is absolutely fine with relaxers. 
I know some companies out there will use them for clients that have gray hair, uh, but others, um, you know, it really depends. All right, so we got her, and look how nice those uh, curling set came out, y'all. She can just leave the salon like this. <laughs> I'm gonna tie a scarf around it and it would look good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually knew a woman that she uh, would do that. Um, she would get a George Washington-like style. Uh, but again, uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder and you can give the client what they want. You cannot give them good taste. All right, so then you could either use your fingers just to gently uh, undo some of the, you know, the curls just like so. I'm going to be right back after I just comb her. But if you just did some finger tossling, that is what you would have. And if you did like the, you know, shake, like that hair challenge, still a lot of body, a lot of wave. All right, so starting at the bottom, I just go and I comb. You can even take another hand behind it just as smooth as you go along. Now, I know a lot of people go, why on earth would I do a comb out? Well, uh, comb outs give you a lot of control as the stylist. And what it's about is controlling the hair so the hair does not control you. And I know that's something that a lot of uh, hairdressers get, you know, worried about and they get a little um, stressed about early on. But it gets better with time and practice, you know. And that is my client's comb out. Probably gonna fine tune it a little bit before I go into the uh, kind of the theory behind this. I don't think this is a fail, y'all. I think that this mannequin has a lot of versatility, but I will be right back after I fine tune. Greetings, y'all, and happy Friday. So like I said, I took my relaxer victim <laughs> and I gave her a nice uh, set for some body, and I gave her a nice little comb out. So this is really what to expect when getting a relaxer. The hair feels a lot better. Again, it's been um, you know, normalized with the normalizing shampoo, the pH is restored, and I did not notice um, much shedding, to be honest. I was you know, worried about that. The hair had processed uh, for the full processing time, and you know I tried to be as quick as possible while teaching as well as getting the product on the hair. And I must say it came out really well. Uh, some of the root is a little bit, uh, what do you call it, wavy, but that is to be expected because of how curly the hair was. What I could do possibly in another video is do a relaxer uh, touch up, you know, how to do a root application if y'all want to see that. Um, again, I don't want to wreck this mannequin, so I'm a bit nervous to do that. Normally in the salon, I'd be like, yeah, no, we're not doing nothing. But again, after a relaxer, I know some people do this, I do things differently. I like to do a wet set or a flat wrap or something because you're not going to stress the hair out more than you would by putting a flat iron or a pressing comb on it. So, Let's take a look at this, right? The hair is nice, it's combed out. She's got a, a maintenance plan. She's gonna go home and wash her hair and guess what? It's probably gonna be smooth still. Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit smoother. It's not gonna be um, wavy and kinky curly like it once was. The reason why is we caused lanth ionization. That is the process of going into the cuticle and breaking apart a uh, the hair, we are we are doing way more than just breaking bonds. We are hitting the hair with a chemical so caustic, a sulfur atom is flying out, and it's going to force the hair to form this very weak bond. So while lanthionine bonds are you know strong in terms of okay, the hair is still on the head, they are structurally weak. If you overstress the hair that has been put through lanthionization, you will have no hair or a free chemical haircut, as I used to say. Um, 
So that is that. The hair still feels clean. It still feels like regular hair. It does not feel uh, any more damaged uh, than if you were to use another chemical. Uh, I was really impressed that her ends are still decently healthy. So it shows that even after a permanent wave, you can actually still get good results. Now, again, I wanna stress this for the third or fourth time. Uh, you do not wanna ever do this, but this shows you that relaxers, sodium hydroxide, are safe on curly perms. Now, when it comes to, you know, thio relaxers, mm -mm, don't even risk it. And if her perm was overprocessed where it was pinned straight, you would run the risk of massive breakage. But with using the correct science, using the correct, uh, you know, protocol, you could still get nice hair that has been uh, well treated. And if you look in here, uh, you know, she's got a lot of volume from the roller set and a lot of waves. You don't have to worry about the hair being, you know, conformed into the wave shape permanently. Chances are, again, her hair will be a lot smoother when she rinses. And that's just because of what happens with a relaxer. So she has the option to smooth her hair with a flat iron or pressing comb. And that's been one of the biggest uh, myths slash misconceptions of a relaxer is people think that you can just wash and wear the hair and to a point you can. But usually with a relaxer, just like a perm, you have got to use a little bit of maintenance, use some products, use heat protectants. This client needs to be on a conditioning regimen. You wanna make the client sign a contract. She will come to the salon for a deep conditioning treatment, roller set or flat wrap or style. Something just to put the moisture and especially proteins back in her hair that she is missing from this chemical service. Uh, because even after the best relaxer, it is all damaging to the hair. It does not matter if your relaxer has shea butter or all these ingredients, because let me tell you all something, if you could relax hair using shea butter and eggs and all this stuff, you could just go on into the grocery store, throw it in a blender, throw it on your hair, and it would work at home. You know, those are just, uh, you know, little additives and marketing tools that are aimed to getting people to use their product. At the end of the day, Lie is still lie, no lie is a lie, and they all will do the same thing to the hair. So I am pretty impressed with the results. Uh, what do you all think on this? Uh, do you think this was a good relaxer? Here's the back. Comment down below if you learned something new from this video. If you want me to do the touch up or if you want me to do a video on how to color relaxed hair because relaxed hair is really difficult to color and lighten. It's one of those things that even the best colorist that is seasoned can mess up on and the results are dire. So comment down below what y'all want me to see. If y'all like these videos, consider becoming a member to support my channel. All the money goes to buying new mannequins, buying products, as well as providing free education to everybody. And if y'all like my content, uh, like it, subscribe, hit that button down below, and I look forward to networking with y'all soon. God bless each and every one of y'all and have a fantastic weekend.